For more on this, let me bring in Ken Cuccinelli. He's national chairman of the Election Transparency Initiative. Uh, and there's a lot to discuss here. Ken, good to have you back with us. Good to be with you, Ben. Um, I guess I'll start there just because I played the audio of it. But David Axelrod talking about, hey, man, a lot of Republican voters aren't going to be able to show up now. What do you make of all of this? Well, certainly Asheville is a blue dot in um, in red Trump country in western North Carolina. Yeah. And, uh, and we've all seen the pictures. I mean, literally entire towns have been wiped out. People who don't have flood insurance because they live in the mountains, they think, why do I need flood insurance? Um, and they didn't own a lot to begin with. Um, so they're going to have a hard time recovering. We've seen, you mentioned Joe Biden's dragging his feet. Roy Cooper, the governor is dragging his feet. He had a made an, finally made an appearance today in Haywood County, introduced ex- his executive team and said virtually nothing. Um, you know, after a full week of the relief effort, um, all he could talk about was about $6 million in funds for locals, which in the big scheme of things is a drop in the bucket. Very little useful information was provided, and it really looks like Cooper's intentionally dragging his feet here to make Dave Axelrod's comments on the breakdown of the electorate a reality in terms of who doesn't vote. This is voter suppression by passive means. And we know, I mean, think of Ian two years ago. Ian hammered Florida at right about the same point on the calendar. Um, And Governor DeSantis, uh, despite the devastation, was rebuilding roads and bridges, you'll recall, um, but also getting uh, voting needs assessed and addressed quickly. We haven't seen a a lick of that in North Carolina. And South Carolina's doing it, Georgia's doing it, Florida's doing it, but North Carolina isn't. And uh, the, the... absence of activity is striking for its political impact and one has to conclude governor cooper's political intent and i know him i worked with him as an attorney general he comes across as a nice aw shucks middle of the road guy and he has never governed that way he is a very partisan individual and we're seeing it play out to the detriment of these poor folks who've already suffered so much in western north carolina would if, if we lived in a normal country, would the would there be any other way to circumnavigate the governor? For instance, I mean, this seems like a civil rights issue that you don't have access to the vote. Would a, would a ju- would a functioning Justice Department be able to step in? I don't think you'd see it via courts. But what you've got the House and the Senate of North Carolina coming in next week. They do have veto proof majorities if all of the Republicans vote together since the uh, one of the House members switch from Democrat to Republican, and they have overridden the governor's vetoes on other matters. So I think what you're, you're going to see, Vince, is just before they convene, the governor will start to look like he's taking some actions. If I were in those bodies, and as you know, I was a legislator in Virginia, I wouldn't believe it for one minute. I would take control of this situation. I would pass whatever legislation with appropriations were needed to circumnavigate all of it. Um, The North Carolina State Board of Elections, which is basically under the control or influence of the governor, has done nothing. Uh, The Rules Review Commission, which uh, works with them, has done nothing. They had had an emergency meeting, and they met, and that's all they did. Uh, They didn't even – they didn't even – direct folks to begin assessing what's available to actually conduct voting, which you would think is the most basic thing in the world, right? They haven't even done that, much less determined where power is available for voting sites um, and postal services wiped out there. So it's not like you can turn to mail-in voting. Um, This is going to have to be an in-person voting uh, election in those counties because the infrastructure won't exist for any other alternative. And Governor Cooper is seemingly intentionally denying these people the ability to vote by simply not moving to fix or offer alternatives to the voting infrastructure that was wiped out by Helene. I just want to remind people the 2020 uh, margin was 1.34% in North Carolina. President Trump won North Carolina in 2020, but it was by a slim 
margin. We are talking. Uh, this this is a very close race. Uh, it could be, and uh, it could be it could be stolen for the Democrats if uh, Roy Cooper has his way, uh, as as you're pointing out, Ken Cuccinelli. So, in other words, beginning next week, as you're as you're now telegraphing, the the Republican legislature in North Carolina, the House and the Senate there. They have an obligation to quickly move on making sure that North Carolinians are represented in the vote. Yes, and I understand the speakers fired up about this. Uh, just what I've observed a little bit from afar. I haven't talked to him yet, Speaker Moore. Um, but um, the, you know, they're real life examples of how they're impeding people. There's a there's a, just a hero in North Carolina by the name of uh, Charles Tresker. He is the CEO of ALG Senior, which is a nursing home company. They have like, they have over a hundred nursing homes. He is desperately trying to get help. He's flown, meaning sponsored over a thousand helicopter flights missions um, to support people, not just at the nursing homes, but across all 22 counties. And FEMA is throttling him on this. So Joe Biden's in on this too. Um, Cooper, they're getting in his way instead of assisting him. And of course, that's because he's making them all look bad by actually performing. And he works, his clients, the elderly in those nursing homes, are some of the folks who have the hardest time voting of all. And they have been taken advantage of in the past in many states. Yeah. Um, but it looks like the take advantage of them by Roy Cooper now is going to make it as hard as possible for them to vote. And uh, it's interesting we're not hearing the voter suppression talk from the mainstream media about this failure by Joe Biden and Roy Cooper. Um, but that's what's going on here, Vince. And, and as you pointed out, given the close margin in 2020, unless people are just so angry at the poor performance here that flips votes in Trump's direction, then just the absence, as David Axelrod mentioned, of the voting in these rural counties could flip the state. And that is, uh, that's, and not just for President Trump, you've got great folks like Dan Bishop running for attorney general. You've got their statewide offices are up. Um, I don't think it'll flip any local races, but the statewide races could change entirely because of the availability or lack thereof of voting in these 22 counties. And Governor Cooper seems quite determined so far to make sure that that, quote, tragedy, unquote, and I put it in air quotes because that's how he's viewing it for purposes of voting. This is obviously a real world tragedy, but he's taking advantage of it. He's taking Rahm Emanuel's advice, never let a crisis go to waste. Well, he's using it passively to suppress Trump votes. So uh, I shared in the last half hour that Elon Musk has indicated that he's trying to get Starlink help in order to get people connected on the internet yeah. and rescue help in uh, their and uh, his guys are on the ground and they've been trying to work with the Trump team just to get the airspace cleared because they don't know where else to turn. Uh, they say that right. the airspace is being all blocked up uh, by the Biden-Harris administration. And uh, Secretary Transportation Secretary Pete Boot Edge Edge about an hour ago uh, tweeted at Elon Musk, quote, no one is shutting down the airspace and FAA doesn't block legitimate rescue and recovery flights. If you're encountering a problem, give me a call. Oh, that's nice. How many people can call the transportation secretary to help you yeah, know, rescue right. well, American or citizens? Or will he be on another nine months of paternity leave yeah. um, when the call comes in? More passive resistance. And, um, yeah, the mealy mouth words in there just suggest that what people like Charles Trefsker are saying is absolutely true. They're trying private efforts to rescue people, and the Biden administration, Harris, and Cooper are all getting in the way as opposed to making it happen because anybody who's doing this job well makes them look bad and makes it obvious what they're not doing. And of course, I'm sure you've already talked about how FEMA bled out all its money on illegal aliens and says, oh, sorry, we don't have any money to get you all food for children or voting for all the adults. Yes. Well, let me ask you about that, because the White House today is screeching that uh, we're not spending FEMA funds on illegals, but they turn around and they say all we're doing is having FEMA send money to programs that take care of illegals. Uh, help me understand uh, what a kind of excuse <laughs> nothing, this is. There, there's, there is nothing to understand. They, they say sentences like that, and they simply expect the media, that's sort of giving the marching orders to the mainstream media to cover up for them. And the media has. Can you imagine if 
the Trump administration had, say, you know, spent extra money, had moved FEMA money over to the Department of Defense, and then a natural disaster hit and they ran out of money, ran out of money, what would the mainstream media be doing? They'd be going berserk 24 hours a day, every day. And yet here we, it's, it, this is even worse. At least that would be to defend us. This is to give it to people breaking our laws to enter our country as invaders, and yet hardly a peep out of the mainstream media. It's so important. I'm glad you're talking about it. DC hears you. It's so important that people know that this is the kind of alternative choice you have in leadership between these two. Is it America first or America last? Yeah. And that... here we have a real life example of America last. Well, the, the critical thing is what happens in November as a result of all of this, because, you know, this, this at some point you would hope that voters would say this is enough. I, I can't I can't take it anymore. It's it's this is well beyond uh, anything most of us could even imagine. As you look at the, the political winds and, and the direction they're headed, what are you predicting right now, Ken Cuginelli? Well, I'm predicting a very close race, and that's why subjects like what you and I are talking about here in western North Carolina is such a big deal. Um, I will say, as you know, I wear an election integrity hat. Uh, that's a big part of why I've been watching this problem in North Carolina so closely at the Election Transparency Initiative. And we are much better off than we were four years ago in that regard. But ultimately, people have to show up and vote what they believe. That's, that's the ultimate determinant of the outcome. And I agree with you, but I also know that I'm not in the middle of the bell curve. I think that the old question of are you better off than you were four years ago is a killer question for Kamala Harris, just a killer. And if everybody who, for whom the answer to that is yes votes for her and everybody for whom the answer to that is no votes for Trump, um, she won't win a state. She won't win a single state if that's the decision basis. And, um, you know, here's hoping Americans wake up to the to the fact that they're facing off with not just socialism, but good old, just a soft, gentle version of communism on that side with all the tyranny and the censorship that goes with it. Yes. And they'll deny people voting opportunities when it serves their interests. As the old saying goes, and we heard it w with the Venezuela election, you can vote a socialist government in, but you can't vote them out. That's it's awfully true. hard. That's true. Ken Cuccinelli. That's staring down the barrel of. Thank you, sir. I, I always appreciate you uh, coming on with us. Ken Cuccinelli, national chairman of the Election Transparency Initiative. Good to be sir, with you, Ben. Good to talk to you.